This can't be right. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase Summit. Today I've got a quick video that's sort of a public service announcement. I just wanted to talk about something I noticed on Amazon Prime Day that's still happening now. Last weekend, I was browsing all the deals on watches and Garmin's and Fitbits and all that stuff. And I noticed something special. The Garmin Forerunner 945 was on sale for $499 or 500 bucks. And that's a crazy good deal for this watch. It's really quite amazing. I thought that deal was going to end on Prime Day, but it's still happening now. I just noticed today that the Garmin Forerunner 945 is still $500 on Amazon. Probably gonna be gone after I post this video, but while it's there, you should probably go check it out. Link's down in the description, by the way. Now that begs the question, the Garmin Forerunner 745 just came out a few weeks ago, and I reviewed it on this channel. I have a link up here to check out that review if you're interested. But now the Garmin Forerunner 745 is the same price as the 945. And the Garmin 745 is not on sale right now because it's still a pretty new device, so these rarely go on sale. The Garmin 745 is currently $499, and the Garmin 945 is currently $499. So what do you do? Which one do you buy? What's the difference? Let's talk about that today. Before we get into it, if you find this video helpful or at least entertaining, give me a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. All right, so I've got the 745 and the 945 side by side here. And I just want to walk through what some of the differences are uh, between the two in terms of specs and hardware and features and all those things. The first thing you notice between these two watches is obviously the size difference. The Garmin 745 is 43 millimeters in diameter and the 945 is 47 millimeters in diameter. So that's a pretty big difference in the diameter of the watch, but they are both pretty much the same thickness at around 13 millimeters. Both watches are almost the exact same weight. The 745 is 47 grams and the 945 is 50 grams. So three grams difference, you're probably not gonna feel that on your wrist. Both watches feature a 1.2 inch display. Even though the 945 is a larger watch, it still has the same display. So you get those pretty chunky thick bezels around it, which not a lot of people love but it is what it is. I do prefer the form factor of the 745 over the 945. Let's talk about what's the same between these two watches in terms of features. They're almost exactly the same watch when it comes to smartwatch and fitness features. As you can see here, both watches feature the advanced training metrics that you'll find on all the high-end Garmin watches. That'll show you things like your VO2 max, your race predictor, how fast you could run certain distances. Both watches also support training status, training load, and training focus which try to give you a better idea of how the training volume is affecting your fitness over time. You can see that both watches when they display this data are very similar and almost identical in the way they perform. Both the Garmin 745 and 945 give you Garmin's latest Elevate heart rate sensor, which features a blood oxygen saturation sensor as well to give you your SpO2. Both watches have the same smartwatch features with weather widgets, a calendar widget, and all kinds of other things to help you read your text messages and all that stuff. We won't go too far into the rabbit hole of what these watches can do. If you wanna see more on that, go check out the dedicated reviews I've already filmed on them down in the description down below. Both of these watches also have the ability to store music on the device itself for offline playback when you don't have your phone with you, which is great for those shorter runs where you just don't want to go out with too much stuff. And of course, both watches are compatible with Garmin Pay, so you can pay with your wrist without having to pull out your credit card, and that's especially important in today's day and age. But only if your bank supports it. <laughs> in terms of what activities you can track between the 945 and the 745, they're basically the same watch in that regard. They both have GPS, altimeter, compasses, and all those other sensors to give you all the best data you can get. And I find that the Garmin 745 actually does outperform the 945 in terms of GPS accuracy. I'm not sure why, it might be an updated uh, antenna design or something, I'm not sure, but it's a little bit better, even though the 945 is still really good. In terms of heart rate accuracy, again, I think the 745 is a little bit better, and I'm not sure if that's a software improvement or actual hardware improvement, but again, the 945 isn't that bad there either. Now, there are a couple of things that are on the 745 that are not on the 945, even though the 945 is supposed to be a tier above it. For instance, if you look here, the Garmin 745 has a new activity specifically for running on a track. This function basically takes your first run when you're running on a track, uses the GPS data for that circle, and then it copies that every time you follow the track, and it tries to bring you back in line with that first circle. This is great technology, and other brands like Chorus have implemented it, and it works really well. The other feature specific to the 745 is the suggested workouts. Basically, when you try to go for a run, it tries to suggest a workout for you based on your fitness level and your training load for that day. Again, this can be really handy if you use these kinds of tools, uh, just another tool in your quiver to help you train. But again, the Forerunner 945 does not have that yet. And the last feature I wanna talk about is the recovery time on the 745 versus the 945. Both watches will give you a recovery time after you go for a long run. However, the Garmin 745 takes a lot of other details into account when it gives you that data. It actually goes back
back and collects your sleep data, your stress data, your body battery, and your training load, and then it gives you an estimated time for how long you should be recovered from that run. The Garmin Forerunner 945 does not do this. The recovery time is purely based off of that particular activity. However, I just noticed that Garmin updated the beta firmware for the Forerunner 945 on their website to uh, 5.15, and this new firmware update actually brings a lot of those 745 features over to the 945, including that track mode I just talked about and the new recovery time. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in this beta firmware update as well, like improved uh, optical heart rate sensor accuracy, bouldering and in indoor climbing activities, uh, grit and flow features specific for mountain biking, and some other little details I'm not going to talk about here. One thing to note, I wouldn't suggest using beta firmware on the 945 if you heavily rely on your watch, like if you're in a long race coming up or something like that, because beta firmware can be a little bit unstable in certain departments. Next up, let's talk about battery life. The Garmin 745 features up to 7 days in smartwatch mode or 16 hours in GPS on time. The 945 features about two weeks of smartwatch mode and up to 36 hours of GPS on time. That's a lot more battery life on the 945. I gotta be honest, I was hoping for more out of the 745 when it came to battery life. 16 hours of GPS on time isn't that great for someone who runs a lot. It's not just about having long battery life for really long activities like ultra marathons. If you're a heavy user, you use it every day for GPS tracking on a bike or you're running or something. Those hours add up and it means you'll be charging your watch a lot more often. Let's talk about what's exclusive to the 945. The 945 features full offline mapping capabilities. As you can see here, I can navigate courses, I can see what's around me in terms of like restaurants and points of interest. I can design a round trip course right on my wrist without using my computer at all based on how far I want to run and what direction I want to go in. All this stuff is super powerful and it's only on the 945 and Phoenix line at this time. The Garmin 745, however, does have some navigation features. You can navigate a course on here, but you won't have full offline map. And the navigation features be between the 745 and 945 is probably the biggest difference between these two watches. So yeah, at the end of the day, you've got 500 bucks in your pocket. Which one should you get, the 745 or the 945? In my mind, it's really a no-brainer. I would go for the 945 every day, all day. The only reason I could see the 745 being a good option would be if you just can't stomach the size of the 945. The 745 is a little bit smaller, it's a little bit easier to put on your wrist, maybe if you have really small wrists, it might be a better option, but the 945 has full offline mappings, way longer battery life, and it's the same price. That's really all I got for today. I just wanted to share this with you before they sell out. It looks like there's only 20 left on Amazon right now, so head over there in the link down in the description if you're interested. That link is an affiliate link, so it helps support my channel, but it costs you nothing extra. I hope this video helps some of you out there interested in a new watch from Garmin. If you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing so you don't miss more content from me in the future. That's all I got for today. I'll see you in the next one.